Welcome to this installment of Gonzo Gamer. Johnny and Pandacrout have blessed us with the latest version of the JMP Rebalance mod, or maybe cursed us in some cases, which is now version 1.28. The information in this video assumes that you're already familiar with the previous version, so I will only be discussing the changes. Keep in mind that it is not my intent in this discussion to present strategies nor to get into army builds here. I'm just presenting the changes so you can start to devise your own devious plans. Just remember, no plan ever survives contact with the enemy. Let's start with an overview of some of the major new features before jumping into the details. Most of the information in this video comes straight from the change log, discussions with Panda Kraut, and visuals from the game. Charge cooldown is now shorter if a charge ends early. That means that canceling an AI charge now gives you just a brief reprieve before the likely charge again. AI infantry can now detach skirmishers. The number is based on enemy deployment size with a maximum of 10. This can be turned off in the AI config file. The AI will now use counter charge if you engage it in melee. Units remaining in one place will begin to dig in and the unit flag will begin to display as fortified as this progresses. Up to 10% cover can be gained this way. The bonus is lost when the unit is moving. If the unit stops moving near the original position within a short time, the bonus will be regained without having to dig in again. There is now a slow fire mode for skirmishers. The hold position button accomplishes this for those units that have weapons that are greater than 400 range. They will have a slower rate of fire. Their aim and volley times will reduce their damage per second. They will hit their max stealth penalty after two volleys so they can stay safely hidden for longer. The terrain bonuses to cover have been reduced in areas other than open ground, so it's now harder to reach 100% cover without perks. All fortifications now require that units get much closer before they can occupy them. Artillery cover penetration is now based on cannon weight, shot type, and if the cannon is a smoothbore or rifled. There's now an anti-ballast scaling mechanism. This activates when the player's infantry is more than 2k larger than the average unit size. Supply wagons can now refill from supply points, so that's pretty cool. Adding veterans is now limited to the number of men in the player's veteran pool. This pool is filled by either disbanding units that have participated in a, in a battle already, or by taking casualties. The veteran pool tracks its own stats, so the veterans that you get from the pool are going to be different than those of your unit. A new casualty system allows for a percentage of wounded and badly wounded soldiers to return to service through the veteran pool. Building an army starts with human resources, and the new resource pool is one of the biggest changes of the game, so let's start digging into the details there. Rather than the single resource pool of the past, the new resource pool is divided into four categories with recruits, veterans, wounded, and badly wounded. And there are a number of different factors involved here. First, your recruits are those soldiers that you earn from completing battles and from your prisoner exchange. The new recruits rewarded to you will always get the lowest stats in your pool. Unlike the previous version of the mod, new recruits do not get the instant bonus from training. However, the minimum stats of new recruits will gradually increase as time progresses through the war, starting in 1863. I will go over training effects on soldier stats when we review the career points. Like the current version of the game, the CSA has better starting stats than the Union. However, the four units that the Union gets at the start of the campaign have higher veteran stats than those three of the CSA. Your veterans are in the second resource pool listed. Everyone knows that in the previous version of the mod, your only limitation on getting vets was how much money you had and how many men were in the single big resource pool. That's no longer the case. When you buy vets for your units, they will come out of this pool, and once the pool is empty, you're out of vets. In addition, the vets that you buy no longer automatically level to the stats of the unit when they're purchased. You can see the stats of the vets in the pool. If your unit stats are higher than this, then adding the vets will decrease their unit experience. Of course, this means that adding these vets to an inexperienced unit will give them instant experience. 
For many people, this is going to allow them to make one-star units very quickly, but it'll make attaining and maintaining two- and three-star units much more difficult. Be very careful. If you make a mistake when creating new units and you decide to disband them, even though that you've added some vets, all of those soldiers will return to the recruit pool and not to the vet pool. It's always a good idea to save your unaltered camp right after each battle, just in case you make a mistake in camp and need to go back and reload. There are two ways to add vets to the resource pool. If you disband a unit that has fought in at least one battle, they'll go into the veteran pool. Now, if a unit has set in your cores for multiple battles, but they were never deployed to the field, they're still considered new recruits and will go back to the recruit pool. Soldiers who recover from the wounded pool go into the vet pool to return to service. The next two resource pools are your wounded and your badly wounded. So there's a new casualty system that goes hand in hand with your resource pool. When the battle report pops up at the end of a battle, hovering over it will reveal the details of your casualties and it'll look like this. This report only includes your units. It does not include any of the allied units that fought with you. Obviously, the soldiers killed are gone, and this will be 15 to 30 percent of your total casualties. Soldiers listed as missing will be 5 to 15 percent of your total casualties, and up to 40 percent of those can be returned to the unit after the battle, depending on the unit's command level and points in AO. If an MIA soldier does not return immediately after a battle, then they're considered dead. Another 20 to 30 percent of your total casualties will go into the badly wounded pool, and 25 to 35 will go into the wounded pool. Now, after each battle, 35 percent of the men in the wounded pool, plus adjusted by whatever medicine percentage you have, will move from the wounded pool into the veteran pool so you can use them again. So as you progress and your army gets bigger, obviously you take more casualties and therefore you'll have a bigger pool to have vets. When it starts out, it looks like there's not very many in there. Soldiers only move out of the badly wounded pool and into the wounded pool after grand battles. This will be 35% plus whatever adjustment you have from your medicine. So the badly wounded pool is always going to show zero after grand battles because all of the soldiers either healed up to become wounded and move into that pool, or they've died. So many of the new features in the mod revolve around changes to career points. In the past, some categories were seldom used by various players. Now you're likely going to want all of them. It's truly opportunity cost galore now, so you must decide what you can live without in order to get what you value most. Politics still gives you more money, more recruits, and a resupply discount. However, politics now affects reputation points and the quantity of weapons that are available from reputation. The progression of points can be seen in this chart. Notice that the more points invested, the greater the returns. So whereas the difference between 1 point and 2 points is only 6%, the difference between 9 points and 10 points is 10%. For example, taking politics in the campaign setup gives three points to politics. That is a 17% increase. So rather than 2,000 Springfield 55s available to River Reputation points, there's now 2,340, which would be 17% more. And rather than six ordnance rifles, there's now eight. Now for small quantities of weapons like the ordnance rifles, the math always rounds up. So although I got eight rifles here with three points invested, it would actually take six points in politics to get it up to nine guns with this particular amount. With enough points in politics, you can actually start to get additional reputation points from completing your battles. But to get an extra point from side battles, which are smaller, you're going to have to have at least five in politics. The maximum number of reputation points that you can have now is 125. The maximum morale bonus that you can get from reputation is still 100 points. Now the morale penalty for using up all of your points to buy things has increased. In the past it was only two. Now you have a 
penalty of minus seven. Keep in mind that taking a draw or a loss will lower your reputation score even more, so you'll take greater morale penalties. It's important to understand when the effects of various career point selections take place. So for politics, money, recruits, and reputation points are awarded after each battle. However, the government inventory that you use to spend your reputation points only resets after grand battles. And of course, the supply discount applies after the next battle. The economy still gives a discount to both officers and weapons while giving your resupply discount and increasing the sell value of weapons in your armory. The change here is in the point progression, with every point giving a 5% discount for a maximum of 50. The discount to weapons and officers happens immediately, and the resupply discount is after the next battle. Medicine still slightly reduces the chance that an officer is killed or wounded. However, as mentioned earlier, it affects the number of men who recover from wounds in the new casualty system, which means it increases the number of men that are going to end up in your veteran pool. So one point in medicine gives a 3.33% increase, and 10 points gives a 33% increase. The effects of medicine begin after the next battle. Training has been completely reworked. First, vets in the mod are less expensive in general. Buying vets for support units is still higher than it is buying for infantry, and training still reduces the cost. Second, training still increases the level of the replacement officer when one of your brigade commanders is killed or wounded. Third, do recruits no longer get an instant bonus from training? Now, training provides stat improvements after each battle for your recruit pool, your veteran pool, and any unit that did not deploy during a battle. The increase in stats is half of your training points rounded up to the even numbers, so a maximum of 5 stat points per battle with 10 points invested. Fourth, there's a cap on how high the stats can be trained. With 1 point invested, the maximum is 21. With 10 points invested, the maximum is 30. And this cap does increase slowly over the timeline of the war, much the same way your base recruit stats increase. So your veteran pool might not get a boost between battles if their points are already above the cap. It just depends on what you have invested into training and what the stats are in the vet pool. So an average of 30 stat points in all stat categories will allow a one-star unit to be made with a captain. So if you had 10 in training and formed a new unit and placed it in your reserve, it could actually level up to one star without ever actually fighting in a battle. These four units here were formed after first bull run and have not fought in a battle. Notice the zero battles led and the fact that this captain is the lowest rank you can get, so obviously he hasn't done anything other than sit in camp. However, with 10 in training, their stats increased by 5 while first quarter was at River Crossing, and they increased by 5 again when the first quarter was at Logan's Crossroads. Now their command and efficiency are low because the division commander is just a placeholder, low-level lieutenant colonel. You can see the same effect on the recruit pool. First after Bull Run, then River Crossing, then Logan's Crossroads, all with 10 in training. Keep in mind that after every battle, new recruits come into the pool with the minimum stats and pull down the average. So the stats in this pool are lower than the four units that I just showed you because the units that are already in the army are not affected by new incoming recruits. Keep in mind that all four resource pools reflect the combined average of all the soldiers that went into the pool. So if your lower level units are starting to take a lot of casualties in battle, your vet pool stats are going to become lower because the wounded and badly wounded pools are going to be fed into the veteran pool. Likewise, if you decide to disband units after Philippire Potomac Fort, the vet stats are going to change based off on what the stats are of those units. So it is possible to build a new unit that's comprised completely of vets if, as in the previous 
version of the game, you empty the entire recruit pool first. The discount to buying vets happens immediately after adding one point to training. All other training events occur after the next battle. Like the previous mod, AO increases the number of brigades, divisions, and corps that can be created along with their maximum unit sizes. Keep in mind that the maximum division size is now 5 brigades and not 6. This caps the max brigades in a corps at 25. This reduction was done to improve game performance in large battles. Back when the max size was 6, there were issues with detached skirmishers, so most players didn't use them all, or if they did, it was just sparingly. Since those issues have been fixed, plus the AI will now use detached skirmishers, there's a lot more units on the field, which can cause performance issues. So that's why one brigade has been removed from each division. New to the mod is the ability for AO to increase the number of soldiers missing in action that will return to their units after battle. Of course, AI also increases the ammo that can be added to a supply wagon while giving a discount to the supply wagon refill. By the way, you will now be charged to replenish the ammo your units carry, not just what's in the supply wagon. And on multiple day battles, this happens between each day, so it's a good idea to leave some funds in your camp to refill ammo. Otherwise, your supply wagon and units will deploy with however much ammo they had remaining after the previous day's fighting. Since we're talking about AO, this also may be a good time to talk about army size progression so you can plan for your expansion. So this first chart's for the Union. The battles are on the left. The number of brigades that can deploy are in the center. And the min and max amount of AO that you will need are on the right. The first half of the campaign's lifted to the left. The second half of the campaign's listed on the right. And of course, at first bull run in Shiloh, you'll get an extra core with each of those to give you three at 5 and AO if you want to just stay there for a while. If you want to take 4 core to second bull run, you're going to need 7 in AO. And if you want to take 5 to Antietam, you're going to need 10 in AO. If you're comfortable with just using 3 core for a while, then you're still going to have to bump up to 9 in order to field 25 brigades at Fredericksburg. So the Confederates obviously start with smaller AO requirements because they're not putting together as big an army as fast, but you'll still want to have five at Shiloh. Again, you'll get a second core after Bull Run and a third after Shiloh, but if you want to take four core to Gaines's Mill, you'll need seven in AO. And one of the core at second Bull Run allows you to have 25 brigades there, so if you want to have the max, you'll need to have nine in AO before you get to second Bull Run. Or you could wait to go to nine uh, when you get to Fredericksburg, if you're comfortable with just going with three for a while. Again, if you want five core for Antietam, then you're going to have to have 10 AO there. Most of the effects of AO are immediate, except for the resupply discount and improving the return of missing to Ben, which occur after the next battle. Logistics provides all the same functions as before and increases maximum supply while giving a resupply discount. It also increases the number of weapons that appear in the armory. Logistics now starts with a penalty at zero and one point invested. It takes two points to get out of the penalty. However, the shop stock multiplier can be increased higher than the previous version of the mod. And since the extra supply wagon bug was fixed in this version of the mod, you can now get two supply wagons to deploy with 10 in logistics. Investing a point in logistics allows to increase the maximum supply immediately, the supply discounts after the next battle, and the shop will reset after grand battles. Many people either didn't invest in recon or waited until the end to invest in it. I think those days are likely over, at least if you like to get weapons recovered from battle. Recon still provides a spotting bonus that starts at 25 and goes up to 250. It also provides various levels of information with each point invested. However, Recon now increases weapons recovery, 
something that did not exist in the previous version of the mod. That said, weapons recovery has a penalty up until 4 points invested, where the base recovery starts, and at 10 points in recon, weapons recovery is doubled. In addition, the battle balance of forces bar that you're used to seeing with 4 points is now requires 6 points. All recon effects begin with the next battle. Moving into unit stats, so the following unit stat changes have been implemented. Unit morale provides up to a 15% reduction in melee and fire morale damage received. Rotation speed for infantry, artillery, and cavalry increases up to 150% based on your unit's efficiency stat. Morale condition and your commander status do affect this. Your starting recruit stats have been modified. The damage multiplier from efficiency in firearms is now higher than it was in the previous version of the mod. So your perks that are related to damage have been lowered to compensate for this. Various efficiency-based bonuses now have fatigue and morale modifiers applied. Efficiency provides a 10% cover penetration for non-artillery units. So let's deep dive into unit perks for a few moments. So pretty much accuracy, reload, reload speed, and rotation speed have all been decreased to some degree. Melee perks remain mostly unchanged, except that units that have a charge perk now have a passive bonus to melee. So even when you're not charging, you get to use one-third of your charge bonus in melee. So starting with infantry tier 1 perks, marching drills has not changed, it's still 15% percent to speed and 25 percent to charge. With musketry, accuracy has been decreased from 50 percent to 35 percent and the reload speed bonus has dropped from 10 percent down to 5 percent. For tier 2 perks, bayonet stays the same with 15 percent speed, 25 percent to charge, and the minus 15 percent to melee morale damage received. The maneuver perk still gives 15% to speed, but rotation is now 40% rather than 500, and reload drops from a 20% bonus to a 10% bonus. Musketry still gives minus 10 to fire morale damage received, but accuracy is now 35%, and the reload bonus has dropped to 5%. For your tier 3 perks, elite is unchanged. The sharpshooter cover bonus drops to 20%, with accuracy and spotting remaining unchanged. Moving on to the artillery perks. Horse artillery speed is now 75%, and the rotation speed is 400%. Double canister is now 20% rather than 25, and the reload bonus is minus 5. Improved shells are now 20% improved damage to shot shell, and the 5% range increase remains the same. For Tier 2, Close Combat still gives 100% cover, The canister improves damage at 20%. Fire Direction was 25% to accuracy, as it's now 15. Spotting is still at 50%. Counter Battery is 20% improved shot shell damage with a 50% stealth. At Tier 3, the Rapid Fire Specialist is now a 10% reload bonus, and the speed remains the same. The Bombardment Specialist perk has not changed at all. For Skirmishers, cover is reduced to 30% in the Light Infantry perk, while the speed bonus is the same. The musketry drills is the same as an infantry perk, with 35% accuracy and 5% reload bonus. Pickets have had their accuracy reduced to 35% with everybody else, while stealth and spotting still remain at 50%. At Tier 2, all the Zavwe stats are reduced, with 35% accuracy, a 5% reload bonus, and 30% to cover. The scouting perk is the same as the pickets now, with accuracy at 35%. For Tier 3, Modern Infantry keeps their 20% reload speed and morale damage modifiers, with rotation now being 400. Sharpshooters remain unchanged. 
taking a look at cavalry. The discipline perk now adds 15% charge damage and 5% speed to go with the morale damage reductions. Mounted scouts now get 20% accuracy to go with their unchanged stealth and spotting bonuses. Previously, there wasn't any accuracy with that perk. Musketry is the same as the infantry and skirmisher perk with 35% accuracy and 5% reload. At tier 2, your scouting perks are the same as mounted scouts with 20% accuracy added to the standard spotting and stealth perks. Carbine proficiency is 35% accuracy and 5% reload and still has the fire morale damage reduction. Saber proficiency does not change. At tier 3, Shot Cav has a 10% speed bonus added to the unchanged charge of morale damage reduction. And your mounted infantry has 20% effective range when dismounted, which basically turns a 350 yard weapon to a, into a 400 yard range. It has a 10% reload bonus with 400% rotation speed and 20% to cover. Getting into our commander perks. Commander perks have similar adjustments to firearm based attacks. So firepower gives 20% accuracy to all your units except artillery, which only gets a 10% boost. Momentum gives 25% to charge, which now would also give all of your units 8.33% passive bonus to melee if they're charged by the enemy AI, if they don't have melee to defend themselves. Initiative still receives the same 15% to speed. For Tier 2 perks, Fire Specialist provides 20% accuracy to all units except artillery, which is 10%. There is a 5% reload bonus, and of course, the 100% command radius. Shock Specialist receives 25% to charge, 10% reduction to melee morale damage, and the 100% the command radius. The Maneuver Specialist gives 15% to speed, 200% to rotation, and 100% to command radius. At Tier 3, the Inspiring Leader and Father Figure perks have not changed. Innovator gives 30% to your cover bonus and 100% to command radius. The following changes have been made to the AI. Units equipped with 400 plus range weapons will no longer charge outside of countercharging during melee. AI infantry will now run when trying to recapture one of its own units. AI skirmishers that are hidden and equipped with 400 plus range weapons will use the slow fire mode. AI skirmishers will no longer charge offensively. 10 pound parrots and Whitworths will no longer try to stay at max range for the AI. In multi day battles, the split second divisions that are not captured or shattered will show up on the following days if the first brigade survives. The AI bonus to melee power for melee only units has been increased. The user interface has been enhanced in the following areas. First, an error message will display when the main menu loads if there is a config file issue. When a unit is charging, the unit HUD will flash yellow. Fortification tooltips have been updated to be more detailed and accurate. The AI Recon Report Army Size now changes color and has a tool tip to let the player know how far over the minimum they are. Added a tool tip to the In Battle Clock to indicate when an end of day timer is active. The timer will be yellow when an end of day timer is active. Limbering Switch Distance has been increased to 400. The Veteran Toggle will now only allow you to add Veterans up to the amount that are in the Veteran Pool. Right-clicking the arrow button on the slider to add men to a unit will add a larger increment. Increment value can be changed in the config file using right-click increment. Middle-clicking on the slider to add men to a unit will set it to a specific size. That size can be changed in the config file using middle-click size. 
You will now be prompted for a confirmation before units are merged. Decreasing or increasing supply while holding the control button will increment by 5,000. You can now restore automatic naming of brigades when an officer is assigned by naming the brigade reset and then assigning a new officer. The post battle summary will now list the number of unit stars and the equipment used in that battle on the list. Remove the notification for enemy brigade officers when they're wounded or killed at 5 Recon. Officer wounded and killed messages now list the brigade commanded. Moving units around in camp has been disabled for the CSA on the third day of Bull Run and the second day of Shiloh to prevent multiple bugs. So here are the weapons updates. Sawed off shotgun range was increased to 200. Cook and Brother range increased to 300. The range of all pistols was increased to 125. And melee has been bumped up on the Remington and Lamont. The J.F. Brown and Whitworth T.S. melee values have been reduced. Non-artillery weapons with more than 400 range penetrate 15% cover against targets and fortifications. And the melee damage, the D.N. and C, has been increased. Your Siege, James, and Whitworth guns damage has been reduced by 10%. The smoothbore cannon minimum range damage multiplier has been increased to 5%. Here's a list of the in battle changes. All CSA and Union battles up through Antietam have had their timers, scaling, and deployment positions updated. This should reduce the ability to spawn camp and standardize timers for more consistently challenging battles. Some grand battles now have alternative deployment locations for some AI units to provide some variety and encourage the player to have to scout rather than relying on their prior knowledge. Currently, these stick to somewhat of a plausible historical scenarios. Recruit, money, and career point rewards are now static across to win, draw, and defeat. This is to allow players some leeway in accepting a loss or a draw and continuing the campaign. Recruit rewards have been slightly reduced since the player permanently loses a smaller percentage of his casualties. Scaling has been increased slightly on Brigadier General difficulty, and scaling increases slightly starting in 1863. The Whitworth cannon should be more likely to be used by the AI and the siege gun a little bit less likely. The DNNC has been removed from the AI's union selection, so it can't use it. For balance changes, morale bonus and penalties from reputation now also affect the maximum morale for a unit in battle. Maximum morale is still capped at 100, but a large bonus from reputation will help offset the penalties that a unit can get from its condition in battle. Damage penalties on water, bridges, and fords are now less severe. When a unit shatters, it will take additional casualties. Size curve for infantry has been adjusted, so smaller units will do less damage, the largest units will do more, and your midsize is largely unaffected. Artillery that has not fired recently now has a higher stealth. The base supply refill rate is now 55% down from 65%. Shell range has been reduced to 0.75 from 0.8. Charge range has been reduced a bit for infantry. Mounting and dismounting time for cavalry has been increased. So the terrain bonuses to cover have been reduced in areas other than open ground. It is now harder to reach 100% cover, and perks will be required for most unit types to reach the cap. 
Max melee damage penalty for cavalry due to cover is now 60%. Cavalry default cover values has been reduced. Aiming time has been reduced when the target is in close range for non-cavalry units. The AI morale threshold in order for it to be able to charge is now 0.5 rather than 0.35. The melee multiple penalty has been changed to 0.6. Charge speed has been increased by 10%. Captured supply wagon recovery rates have been reduced by 10%. Fortifications now have less effect on infantry reload time and damage. And fortification damage resistance and morale modifiers are reduced in strength. Melee and small arms morale damage increased against fortifications. The weapons recovery rate for the men that remain alive in shattered units has been reduced. Variant size increased max increased to 0.3. Volley duration no longer doubled for pistol cavalry. And the capped volley duration for cavalry is 1,000 men. The base chance to surrender or shatter at zero morale has been slightly decreased. Your brigade officer will now gain XP slower. Increase the minimum brigade officer XP gain. Improved officer rank from allied and AI units. The maximum XP you can see on a brigadier general in the academy has been reduced. Captured units can no longer run. Captured units have also had their speed reduced. Damage bonus reduced to 10% at lower cover values. Core and division officer XP rate has been increased. The XP required for a lieutenant general has been increased. The shell damage modifier has been reduced to 1.35. The morale impact has been increased an equivalent amount. The canister damage modifier has been reduced to 1.75, and its morale impact has been increased an equivalent amount. Exhausted units will now move slightly faster. Your fallback speed has been reduced to equal your run speed. The speed penalty from contact with friendly units has been reduced. So these are the configuration changes. So AI config and the config file changes will now load whenever a battle starts. So no more having to completely exit the game to make changes. Weapon recovery percentage has been added to the config file so you can adjust your weapon recovery rates. Detached skirmisher size modifier added to allow adjustment of detached skirmisher size. So the file mod rebalance starting perks text now lets you switch the perks that your starting units would get in the tutorial battle. Zero for the left perk, a one for the middle perk, and a two for the right perk, which would only be artillery. Since infantry only has two tier one perks, giving it a zero will give you marching drills for the charge and speed bump. Giving them a one will give them musketry for the accuracy and reload boosts. For artillery, a zero would give you horse cav, a one would give you double canister, and a two would give you the improved shells perk. So for bug fixes, fix the bug with infantry condition loss when shooting being higher than intended. Fix the officer duplication bug. Fix detached skirmisher stat issues on save load. Detached skirmishers no longer shatter if their parent is lost. A variety of performance improvements that unfortunately still don't seem to have helped large battles. Reverted Cannon XP rounding change. CSA Antietam manual deploy slots adjusted so that all units in the core will deploy in the battle. Fix the duplicate supply wagon bug. Custom groups will now clear on load. A variety of bugs fixed with weapon recovery rates around interactions with medicine and allied units. 
Decreasing the supply in camp has been disabled in multi-day battles to fix the money exploit. Moving officers has been disabled in multi-day battles to fix the officer dupe exploit. Dead or wounded division officers can still be replaced if you have a spare officer. Fixed a bug where non-English language selections would prevent full deploy of units. And fixed a morale bug in historical battles. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy your adventures in the new version of the JMP mod.